We've done hypothesis testing and confidence intervals with one population or one sample. Now we're going to look at situations where we have two populations and it's unknown how those relate. So maybe we would want to do a confidence interval um, describing the difference between two population means or we'd want to do a hypothesis test, uh, make a claim about how those population means or proportions relate. We have a couple different scenarios can, that can happen. Um, what we're going to focus on here is independent populations, independent samples. Um, essentially, we have the same variable in two populations. So, for example, we're looking at ages of people in two different companies or ages of different genders within one company. Either way, what we're comparing is kind of very different groups, um, but it's the same measurement from those groups. The situation that we won't look at is this dependent uh, ma or matched pairs samples. In those situations, you would actually measure kind of like a before and after or identical twins. Um, that's kind of a whole different concept that we're not going to get into. So we're going to focus on independent sampling to compare two populations. Um, it does need to be the same variable, like I said. So um, if you look at this confidence interval situation, which we won't really do in the homework, but I did want to include it, um, you can see that we would find a confidence interval for the difference between two means, starting with the difference between the sample means, and then adding and subtracting a margin of error. What we'll focus on really is just hypothesis testing. So you can see the different scenarios here. Um, we will compare two means. Um, we'll look at three situations. We'll either look at um, a situation where the population means are the same or different. Um, we'll look at population mean one is below mean two. And in that situation, if you took the difference of them, took mean one minus mean two, you get a negative number. Or mean one is above mean two. And if you subtracted these, you'd get a positive number. Really, the steps that we're going to complete are very similar to what we've done before. The big thing is kind of understanding those alternative hypotheses for Staplet and to um, interpret the conclusion down here. Um, but other than that, we can kind of see these same. We have a t-test or later on when we're comparing proportions, we have a z-test um, and we still find the p-value in a lot the same way. So I'm going to break this down real simple. Um, and go right into a problem from our homework. Here we're comparing um, the enrollment at a four-year and two-year colleges. So we're measuring the same variable um, enrollment, but uh, we want to see if those different populations kind of have different values. So what we need to start with is uh, staplet.com. In this situation, this is the first section of problems in the homework. Um, we're gonna look at one quantitative value variable, but instead of a single group, we'll look at multiple groups now. And we have an option like usual to go with raw data, or um, we would do a mean and standard deviation. In some problems, you do have raw data. That is gonna look like a table with a couple different columns. Here we just have our mean and standard deviation. So why don't I put these um, side by side and then we can look at how this looks in Staplet. So here I've got my two um, variables. I need to have mean and standard deviation for those. The first information that I get is uh, four-year colleges. Second one's two-year. And starting with four-year, I've got 35 of them. That's my M. I've got a mean of 6,357. And a standard deviation of 665. For my two-year colleges, there's also 35 of those with a mean of 6,302 and a standard deviation of 724. So that will be um, all my data in there just for those two groups. I can do begin analysis here. And I've got some options for how I wanna perform inference. We are gonna focus on just the hypothesis tests 
for mu1 minus mu2, or mean 1 minus mean 2. And like I said, um, that will be just slightly different from how we have our actual hypotheses. In the hypotheses, we're really comparing them. Like, is the first population below the second, or is the first population mean above the second? Well, imagine just doing a quick algebraic step where you subtract that mu2 from each side of the equation. So this one would be mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. This one would be greater than zero. This one would be not equal zero. So less than zero, greater than zero. For the left tail test, it's less than zero. Um, in this situation, the student says that enrollment at four-year colleges is higher than two-year colleges. So in other words, the first population mean is above the second population mean. That will be mu1 greater than mu2. If we subtract that over, we get greater than zero. So that's kind of how you interpret this here. Um, the other way you could do it is just look at it as right tail, left tail, two tail. Here we have right tail, left tail, two tail, kind of in reverse order. You don't need to change this degrees of freedom. Um, we're going to keep that by the default, which is a no. Perform inference. You've got your T test statistic, which is um, on the right side about a third of a standard deviation to the right of the mean. That's not very remarkable. We end up with a pretty high p-value. That p-value is gonna be more than alpha, which um, in this problem is 0.05. So we can kind of look at the rest of how that goes. Um, it is safe to make this assumption. We have 35 for our um, n, our sample size for both populations. And here we're doing a mu of four years is greater than, oh, for the null we would do equal, for the alternative we do greater than, there's our t-test statistic, there's our p-value, um, you can see those back here in um, Staplet, and I have changed this to um, give me four decimal places, that's some issue that I did find with the p-value it defaults to only three. So we see those numbers matching. This is going to be a decision to fail to reject. And to interpret that, going back to the notes, um, we have a one-tailed test. We're going to fail to reject. So we're looking at a conclusion something like this. Um, the sample does not provide sufficient evidence or there is not sufficient evidence um, to conclude that the first mean is more than the second mean. So... There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that it's higher at the four-year than the two-year. Um, that's going to be our final answer for that one. So moving on to an example where we have raw data. Back in Staplet, just go back to that main page. We still have one quantitative variable, multiple groups, but now we go with that default where we have raw data to compare. Um, and for these problems... Here we go. For these problems, um, you cannot just copy and paste that whole spreadsheet um, because we need to enter these separately. So we have our Eastern and Western. Um, what you could do is copy and paste that into um, a blank Google Sheets a spreadsheet. Sheets.google.com, blank spreadsheet. So I'm going to copy that, control C, over here, control V. So now you can copy and paste them separately or just type them in. These are pretty small samples, so that will be fine. Oops, I do not need a third group there. All right, so I'm going to begin my analysis. I've got my dot plots. I'm going to go all the way down to inference. And I want, again, a one sample T test. Now I need to know what my alternative hypothesis is for this problem. Does the data show that there is a difference in the goals for these two divisions at the 0.05 level of significance? So we don't have a left or right tail. We just have a not equal sign. That would be a difference. Perform our inference there. We do end up with a population mean one below population mean two. For our t-test statistic, um, that's a negative 1.4, so 1.4 standard deviations to the left, p-value of about 18%, which is more than the alpha. And so kind of relating that back here, we have a um, 
eastern is equal to western for the null. We have eastern is not equal to the western for the alternative. There's our test statistic and our p-value, which come from staplet over there. Again, this one's another fail to reject because the p-value is more than alpha, and we're going to have not sufficient evidence on that one. So the ending part of the process is identical to the hypothesis testing we've done before. Once you get your outputs, that's really identical to what we've done before. The main difference here is going to be we just have um, we're comparing our two means as opposed to we're setting a value that we think our mean equals. So that will be a similar process for um, problems one through four on this homework assignment um, as long as it has not changed.